Hello there, fellow zombie slayers. My name is Stanley557, and here is a truly no-nonsense guide on how to solve the Dead of the Night Easter Egg. Trust me, this won't take an hour, so let's jump into it. Step 1. Obtain the Sentinel Artifact. In this map, the process is quite simple. It doesn't matter what side of spawn you spawn on, just make sure you open up the two doors to quickly advance to the artifact right outside the entrance hall. Step 2. Open up the Pack Punch. So to do this, you'll need to perform three separate tasks by filling up these crystals in the wine cellar, the master bedroom, and the library. These tasks require you to stand in a clock circle for a full minute inside of the mansion, kill vampires by a certain outside perk machine, and locate a special item and follow the ghost to the tuning fork. Once you have all three of them, head outside to the back entrance and interact with the Prima Materia to unlock the Pack-a-Punch. Step 2.5, Alistair's Folly and its upgrades. You can claim Alistair's Folly by either getting it out of the mystery box or obtaining the free one by doing a mini side quest which involves looking for easy to spot symbols around the map. To upgrade the gun, you must first bash this wall of books in the library with your shield to obtain the gun parts, and kill a werewolf with a with silver bullet gun to obtain the werewolf chaos material. Put the chaos materia inside this machine in the laboratory and turn it into prima materia, and now it can be upgraded into the chaos theory. Now head into the cemetery and examine the lamps. Fire your chaos theory at the one with an orange tint. Repeat this four times and kill the vampire that comes out with your chaos theory. If it isn't killed, it will fly into the air and become very hard to kill, so the best thing to do is to leave the cemetery and wait 90 seconds to try it again. Kill the bat to get the vampire chaos materia. For the gun parts, head into the forest and use a charge shot of the chaos theory and hope that the turned effect comes out and hope that a zombie affected by this will dig up parts from these mushrooms. There are three piles in the forest. For the final part, you must use the chaos theory and hope that it fires a tornado shot out. If it does, lead a vampire into it and let it be killed by the storm. Now pick up the bile that drops three times and run back to the cemetery, to this coffin, and interact with it to unleash a super vampire. Defeat the vampire and collect its Nosferatu chaos materia. Place both of the materia inside of the machine and to turn into two sets of prima materia. Now build the annihilator on this workbench in the back and you'll be ready for the easter egg. Step 3. The laser and the puzzle. Now at this point we can do many things. First of all, you should interact with each of the crystals again to begin this step. Now every player must head into the cemetery and shoot the lightning rod with the silver bullets. Once you do, a light beam will be fired out of the cannon into the main hall, where a puzzle must be completed. This puzzle requires players to turn three sets of wheels and dials to make all three rays of light reflect back into the prism in the middle. Now this can be done by a simple pattern. Turn the middle dial until the green light is reflected, then turn the left dial until the blue light is reflected and turn the right dial until the red light is reflected, and then repeat this process once more, and the puzzle will be easily solved. Step 4, the Scratchy Zodiac and the Telescope. Now we must look for one of the 12 Zodiac symbols that can randomly appear in 3 out of 7 locations. These locations can include the Entrance Hall, the Main Hall, the Dining Room, the Wine Cellar, the Trophy Room slash Master Bedroom, the Library, and the Billiards Room. The Entrance Hall will have the symbol under this desk, and the scratch marks will be on the statue wing, down here in the corner of this pillar and on the left side of the room near this painting. The main hall will have the symbol behind this pillar on the right side of the staircase that leads to the west wing of the gallery. The scratch marks are up here on this archway, on the wall next to the statue and the fountain, 
And finally, they can appear up here above the east side fireplace. In the dining room, you'll find the symbol on the right side of this doorway behind this side of the wall. The scratch marks will appear here on the ceiling. They can appear on the tablecloth. And finally, they can appear on the ceiling opposite of the side of the entrance. In the wine cellar, you'll find the symbol in this lower cabinet near where the perk statue can spawn. You'll find the scratches on this barrel in the back of the cellar, on this cabinet door when you come inside, and on the barrel next to the workbench. The trophy room has a symbol behind this bookshelf, and the scratch marks can be seen in this zombie spawn above the tub, another pair on the desk next to the bed, and the final pair behind this elephant tusk next to the fireplace. In the library, the symbol will be next to this vase, and the scratch marks will be right here above the zombie spawn, on the back of this white crate, and the final location they can spawn in is next to the skeleton foot. The final symbol location can be in the billiards room. The symbol could be under this desk, and the scratch marks can spawn under another desk close to the door on the floor, to the left of this glass case on the top, and to the left of this bookshelf. Once you have found and count up the scratches for the three symbols you found, head into the laboratory and insert the symbols in the order of the one with the smallest number to the largest number. If you input the code wrong, you'll have to wait until the next round where the symbols will be randomized again in three different locations with different scratch mark totals. Once it is done, you'll be able to open the viewing window of the telescope by heading over to this crank, and to open the window, interact with the crank, and once the window is completely open, bash it with the shield to lock it in place. Now turn on the electric trap below, and make sure every player in the game runs through it, and then every player must bash the telescope with their electric shield at about the same time. This will end the round, but the step is now completed. Step 5, Lockdown Number 1. The first of three lockdowns can now begin. Under the telescope, you'll find a druid slab. Every player must interact with the tablet for a full three seconds. Once you do, the tablet will fly out of its holding place. This will require the players to fight off zombies, vampires, super vampires, catalysts, and werewolves inside of the laboratory. Once enough have been destroyed, you'll be able to pick up the first tablet and move on to the next step of the easter egg. Step 6. A hell of a time with the ghost. Now once you interact with the three crystals, you'll find that five of the trees in the cemetery will have their leaves falling off. By simply shooting these five trees with a gun or with Alistair's Foley, you'll find that the branches will be falling off of the trees. By interacting with them, you'll find that they fly off into the distance. Now to continue this step, you must look around the graveyard for a gravestone that reads 1912, and look at which character that is, and have them stare at the grave with the interaction button. Once you are in this ghost mode, run over to the pile of sticks and a wickerman cross will form. Fire a charge shot of Alistair's Annihilator until you get the one that fires out a glowing red orb, and now you can interact with the Wickerman statue, and you'll be thrown into hell and come back as a ghost. You'll become invisible to all players, but not to zombies. Now explore the mansion again and look for a ghost that can be hidden in one of the many rooms. Good places to begin your search are in the entrance hall, the wine cellary, the master bedroom, and the library. She will always appear in a zombie spawn. Pay attention to your character's quotes as they will alert you when you've entered an area the ghost is in. Keep in mind you'll have a limited amount of time to find the ghost. If you don't, you'll have to redo the step. Once you find the ghost, simply follow her back to the graveyard and interact with the tablet on the ground to come back to life. You'll now be able to initiate the second lockdown phase. Step 7. Lockdown number 2. Lockdown number 2 will commence inside of the graveyard. This time you'll encounter the vampires, zombies, werewolves, catalysts, and super vampires. I would highly recommend the Humunculus for this step, as the graveyard can become quite hectic. Once you are done, you'll be able to claim the second druid stone. Step 8. The Sword and the Gemstones For the third stone, we will need to activate the flame traps and shoot them with a charged shot of Alistair's Annihilator to turn the flames blue, and by running through them with your shield, you'll be able to melee fireplaces with your shield and turn them blue too. You'll need to melee four fireplaces in a specific order three times. The first stone requires the player to light up their shield and run into the smoking room to melee the fireplace, then run into the library and melee the right fireplace, and then the one on the left. Finally, run into the billiards room, and after you've meleeed the final fireplace, you'll find a sparkling gemstone inside of it. The second sequence starts in the master bedroom. You'll need to melee the fireplace in the trophy room, then run into the master bedroom, and then the music room, and finally the dining hall. The second stone will then appear. The final sequence begins in the main hall, on the east side close to the Mozu wall by. Then you'll head upstairs to the east side of the gallery and melee that fireplace, then run back downstairs to the west side of the main hall, and finally to the west side of the gallery. The final stone will now reveal itself. Now with the stones, head into the cemetery and place a stone inside of this knight. 
He will collapse, and the stone will begin to follow you. Make sure you walk as the stone floats very slowly. The second will be in the main hall, and the final knight will be in the garden outside the laboratory. Take all three stones into the forest and place them with these three circles. The circles will lock the stones in place, and knights will appear. The knights are actually soul boxes. Fill each of them up with about ten zombies, and they will move closer to the Pack-a-Punch. Once all three knights have been filled up twice, they will create a triangle in front of the Pack-a-Punch. Kill zombies and werewolves within the triangle, and the third druid stone will appear on the ground. Interact with it to begin the third and final lockdown. Step 9. The Third Lockdown The third lockdown requires the players to fight werewolves, catalysts, vampires, super vampires, and zombies within the forest. The only difference is that the three night gems will roam around the area killing zombies alongside of you. Finish the lockdown and you'll be able to claim the final druid stone. Step 10. The Boss Fight Once all three stone slabs have been claimed, you can now head back to the entrance of the forest and interact with this doorway. Make sure every player is ready before beginning the boss fight. The boss fight has three phases. The boss is also invisible, but you can see his location by the dirt that he picks up when charging at a player. In the first phase, you'll have to turn these statues lining up the lights to aim at a green square, which can spawn anywhere in the room. Once you do, stand in the square until the boss runs into it. Shoot him with your guns, or stab him with a steak knife. Repeat this process until phase 1 is complete. I would highly recommend the steak knife, as it is super effective against the boss for some reason. The second phase is an intermediate phase where the player must fight a bunch of zombies, catalysts, vampires, super vampires, and mini boss werewolves. Once enough have been destroyed, the second phase will end and the boss will reappear for the final phase of the boss fight. Do what you did in phase 1 and the boss fight will be over before you know it. Enjoy the ending cutscene. Thank you for watching, and remember, keep on slaying. Christina Fowler, proud daughter of the Orthone of Britain, sends her regards. I've seen some strange things in my time, but this takes the cake. Good thing you're better at shooting than fortune telling. Now where's the bar? I worked up a powerful thirst. Wait! Did you see that? It means you are not worthy. Witch! Ragged! Pompous ass! Ah, bastard! Ensure the prisoner completes his journey. Done to Alistair Rhodes. You are already too late. You cannot stop what is to come. Where is my father? Godfrey, talk to me!
dearest Scarlet, if I have already fallen prey to the Order, these are the only people I trust to help you stop them. Okay, Dad. Let's see what these friends of yours can do.